Yeah, that is God's honest truth. The worst and funniest thing to ever happen on a photo shoot. Hi guys, my name is Sophia Carey and I am a fashion photographer based in Manchester and London. Today I'm here with Andrew McLean, another photographer based in Sheffield. So if you follow me over on Instagram then you'll see that I recently put on my story a request for your worst or funniest stories as a photographer or a model or a makeup artist on shoot. Today we are going to react to them. So we've not read the stories yet, we're going to go through them and chat about our own experiences on shoot and hopefully it's something worth watching. Okay, so the first one, um, drove 45 minutes and forgot my SD cards. Oh. Luckily the makeup artist had one. I have done that. Yeah. It's not drove, times. I've, but... I've had to go into like PC World or wherever, and just, or even Argos and just, yeah. like, just buy a memory card. Yeah. It's just the worst feeling. I've done that so many times. I was saying to Andrew earlier that on my shoot last week, I rented out the studio for two hours, got there, set up the cameras, realised I'd forgotten my SD cards. It was half eight in the morning, there was no shops open to buy an SD card. Just luckily, the yeah, time. luckily there was a spare SD card at the studio, but I was yeah. I was panicking. <laughs> I have um, like two pouches in my camera bag, one with uh, empty cards, one with full cards. And uh, when I the, when I went on, the, I went to do a wedding shoot, and to do a wedding shoot, I always have four SD cards because I shoot with two SD cards at a time in two cameras, um, and I'd for, I'd forgotten both pouches. I'd taken both pouches out the previous night to clear all the cards, mm. and left them on my desk. So what did you do? Sent my dad to the <laughs> world to buy four memory cards. Oh. Fell off a wall trying to get a shot and fractured my wrist with an hour left of the shoot. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say I've ever done that. I've never fractured my wrist, touch wood. Um, yeah, I want to know how you dealt with that. Um, how that was dealt with. I suppose if it was your left wrist, not for me, they wouldn't have me because I'm left-handed, but in terms of holding the camera, you can operate a camera with just your right hand. Yeah, but if I fracture my wrist, I don't want to be doing it. No, no. But I mean, if it's if it's something you can rearrange, you'd rearrange. But if yeah. it's like a wedding or something, then I suppose with just don't shake it with hand. Oh yeah, with a with your right hand, you can just you can get by. Yeah. I've, yeah. The, the, to be fair, the closest to that outcome is like I've like broken toes when you've stubbed them all. Like cut all my knees up and I'm being now on ground and stuff. But oh. thankfully, never, uh, never anything that serious. Nice. That is, that's a good story. Do I do I know the person that that's happened to? No, you to? don't. Oh, that's right. no. Uh, this person not bringing a C card, so we've gone with that one. Yeah. And saying someone's name wrong the whole shoot. <laughs> the whole sh oh. That means that you've got to that point where the other person's realised that. It, you, they just they can't go back now. They just need to accept yeah. that they're being called another name. I've actually done that, but not not in the same like severity of it. There was I was actually at a wedding, and I got the groom's name mixed up with best man's name. But when I said it, everyone kind of looked at me really blankly, and I just turned them and was like, "Yeah, do you want to get in?" Like I just had to like oh bypass that and be like, "Right, we're doing this shot now." Yeah. <laughs> to try and like start it. Yeah. yeah. On on that note, not photography related. But I called my next door neighbour the wrong name for 11 months oh, you took and this only found out when he sent me a Christmas card. <laughs> he had to put his, he put his name and then put his house number underneath so that I knew and <laughs> he was called Keith and I'd been calling him Tom for 11 months. Doing a test with a blogger doing over 300 images when I realised that I shot on JPEG. That could be saved. That's, that could yeah, be saved. Yeah. The thing about that, there's two things about that. One is that with JPEG, as long as you've got everything right in camera, you can you can work with JPEG. Mm -hmm. It's not, not it's, the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. The other thing is it's test shoot, so Yeah, exactly, been, exactly. You're not being paid for it. Yeah. So that's very true. They can't complain. 
the main actor broke a red dragon during a take. Oh. If you don't know what a red dragon is, we'll put go, a go and Google it. Yeah. Now. Yeah, we'll put a picture with the price. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> up. Yeah, look at and the, you'll know look at the price hurts. and realise how bad that story is. Getting chased out by security. Yeah, I've done that a few times. Yeah, I think every, so many times. Everyone has, yeah. Anybody that's ever shot anybody on a car park anywhere. Yeah, ever. absolutely. Especially in Manchester. Yeah. yeah. I got kicked out of. Uh, oh, speaking of Manchester. The NCP next to Manchester, well, it's actually part, part of the same building, the mm -hmm. Manchester Arena. The stairwell of that, the, the side of it is all of like clear glass bricks. So it's really, really good. It just acts like a softbox yeah. on like a concrete staircase. The problem is I shot in there like three weeks after the car park had reopened after the oh, yeah. attack. Um, so yeah, the guy was really quite blunt it was just like you can't have cameras in here yeah get out <laughs> and i was like all right i was like can i just take these literally like these last two shots he's like no if you don't leave now i can't please yeah he's like okay fair enough. yeah yeah i think the thing with like security is never ask <laughs> just do it yeah. because if you ask and then you still do and they say no and you still do it exactly. then you're like in the wrong, but if you just do it and then you get told not to and you're polite and you leave, yeah. it's not really an issue. It's like anything. If you are okay with them, if you apologise, yeah. if, if you're polite, mm -hmm. then the, what they might do, like I, I was shooting uh, for a brand on car park rooftop, mm -hmm. uh, the Arndale, and guy came out and was like, oh, you can't shoot up here without a permit. So we just really apologetic, explained to him what we were doing, explained to him, how long we would have been if he if he'd asked us to leave and he said well so are you only gonna be like 15 minutes we said yeah not even that he's like okay in that case carry on yeah, yeah. um and he actually stayed and like was watching us but, yeah. but not thinking that we were doing anything wrong just out of interest he was just yeah, yeah. watching so yeah you get, you get back what you give mm, absolutely yeah i did a shoot re recently in croydon and we got kicked out of every location we shot in literally every single one <laughs> that's not I know, but we had like enough shots from each place that I, it didn't I really matter. I really want to shoot Huh? I really want to shoot in Croydon. Do you? Yeah. Well, not many people say that. <laughs> and, uh, that's oh. why I want to shoot there. Because everyone's like, oh, it's Croydon. All right, I know about this story. I'll explain it in a bit more depth. So this person's put, somebody used a phrase that I used as banter to create an entire brand and profit from it. What? So I was actually on this sheet as well. Um, I don't want to name any names, but we were on sheet with a person and this other photographer had made like a joke about, just like a joke about what she was wearing or something. Um, and after the shoot, the model used that term and created a brand what? from like what she was saying. And like to make it worse, like she posted all this other photographer's images, didn't credit her. when she commented to say like can you credit me she was like can you please stop being so unprofessional and like leave me all these things like on my um post and it was so like oh. yeah it was such like a bad situation oh, and she ran that this company like a full company off of this phrase that this other photographer had like made a joke about what? yeah i'll show you it later <laughs> oh that's, that's interesting put in the comments who you think it is <laughs> if anyone gets it i'll be very impressed Someone forgot their belt. I think you can probably get another belt. Yeah. Yeah, that's all right. That's not too bad. I have, to be fair, I have... I'm guessing they're, yeah, their model. I have actually used a camera strap as a belt before. As a belt? Yeah. I I've, guess it would work, wouldn't it? I forgot my belt and it was, the shoe, I was, I, I was constantly having to be crouched because we shot a lot of quite wide upward shots. So I just put them, um, uh, I had I was wearing like baggy jeans, so I just uh, got um, one of my camera uh, one of my camera straps and just ran it through my belt holes. That's a good idea, yeah, yeah. Work with what you've got. Absolutely. And <laughs> um, these two are both very similar. Um, one person dropped their camera with their thirty five mil on it, but it was fine. The other person dropped their camera before she and smashed her screen. Oh, I um I went to Spain last year and i had the camera oh, I yeah this. and it was raining so i was like right i don't want it to get wet i put it in my bag 
And then I'm walking along and I'm like, I can feel water on the back of my legs. And I'm thinking, why is it only raining on the back of my legs? So I, I, t I take my bag off and I have a look and it's not rain. It's my bag dripping on the back of my legs. I open my bag and my bottle of water's leaked, flooded my whole camera out. And the next day I was flying back to Manchester for a shoot. Yeah, I remember and like, you got yeah, next day. Got back at midnight, went into Jessup, so like, as soon as it opened, like, I need to that's my camera now. That's you got this isn't it? Yeah, yeah that's yeah, why yeah. I got this, yeah. I've had two instances that are similar to this. The first one is pretty much exactly the same as you, but I didn't have a shoe lined up. It was when I was in Egypt, I was flying back from Egypt, bought a bottle of water in Egypt airport, put it in my camera bag, and at that point I had like an over the shoulder camera yeah. bag. So just put it in there, and I was like, oh, it'd be fine because it stood up. Forgot about it, laid my bag down, the bottle of water leaked, and flood, uh, same, just flooded my camera bag. Yeah. Thankfully, when I got home, I've not got anything. This was like sort of really early on, so I, did, I wasn't having like regular work. Mm -hmm. um, so I could I just claimed on my travel insurance and go back. The other one, again, when I went away, um, I was using a gorilla pod to film a time lapse from the top of a apartment building in Singapore because mm -hmm. um, it was the, I was in Singapore the week after the Formula One, okay. um, and the apartments that me and Hannah were stopping it. Uh, they'd got a, an infinity pool on the roof, mm. so they got like a roof terrace. And on the railings, had my gorilla pod around the railings filming a, uh, a time lapse. Were they for sure, a time lapse? Time lapse. And uh, it just went like this. And the camera and lens came out of the gorilla pod and fell 24 stories. Oh. I couldn't even find it. Really? Yeah, it's just it. gone. Gone forever. Oh, wow. I just hope that nobody was stood at the bottom. Yeah, oh gosh. 24 stories and all that was left is just my gorilla pod with <laughs> no plate. Did you watch it happen? Yeah. Oh. I was, oh, I, I was watching the back of the camera and then it just went. Yeah, that's. And as it came down, it hit the, because it was like a railing over a glass panel, came down, hit the glass panel, came out of the gorilla pod. And dropped. Oh, I don't even want to think about that. Yep. Canon 5D3 and a Canon 24-70 2.8L. So, oh. at the time, this is like going back a few years, at the time the camera was worth about, what, about 1800 quid? Mm. The lens was like two grand. Mm. My insurance company do not like me. No, I, um, I can understand why. <laughs> yeah. To be fair, it's two years since I've claimed. Well, touch wood. Don't yeah. think so. Yeah. Right. Have you got any others other than breaking like most of your equipment? Well, yeah. Other, other than destroying my entire uh, camera bags. Um, the funniest slash worst thing to happen to me on a photo shoot. Uh, it's both. It's hilarious and really bad. Is uh, I was shooting a wedding um, in Sheffield three years ago. Three years ago. And the, you don't know this story. Okay. The, I was shooting the bride, uh, shooting the bridal prep, so the bride getting ready. And then I went to the venue. Uh, sorry, I went downstairs to where the, the ceremony was happening because it was all in the same venue. And went down to get some shots of the groom, but he wasn't there. Um, so 15, 20 minutes went past, the groom still wasn't there. Um, got to when the registrar was meant to be speaking to the groom, mm -hmm. still wasn't there. By which point I'm like, yeah, we need to get hold of this groom and find out where he is. Um, so I got the daughter of the bride and groom, because they were, they were sort of in their mid forties, they got okay. kids. It was the second wedding for both of them. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, but yeah, I got the daughter to ring what was her stepdad. Couldn't get through to him. Uh, tried ringing the best man, his brother. Couldn't get through to him. Eventually, the groom turns up 45 minutes late. Yeah. Hammered. Oh, no. Absolutely hammered. Him and his brother had drank an entire bottle of brandy. Oh, no. Both turned up, absolutely hammered, 45 minutes late. And the bride walked up to the groom and punched him in the face. Oh, my gosh. Punched him in the face. And they were due to get married at one, and there was another ceremony at three. 
he got there at uh, quarter to two, but the people that were getting married at three got there early. So I managed to persuade the registrars to and the venue to switch the ceremonies around. Yeah. So the three o'clock wedding, they ended up getting married at like 20 past two. Yeah. And the one o'clock one, they st- he even after she punched him in the face and he turned up drunk. Oh my God. She still married him at like half past three. Um, they, we Did just, he say that? Yeah, we just like force fed him coffee and water. Um, and uh, and just managed to calm the bride down. Oh my gosh. But yeah, that is God's honest truth. The worst and funniest thing to ever happen on a photo shoot. Groom turns up late, hammered, bride punches him in the face, and now we're in a, three quarters later, they still get married. I'm not sure the bride would find that funny. <laughs> they're, still, they're still married now. Are they? They're still married now. This is, uh, this is probably four or five years ago because it was when I it was when I just start I think it was in my second year of doing weddings weddings yeah um yeah so like four or five years ago but yeah they they can laugh about it now but yeah oh wow amazing in, ter- like, in terms of like bad things at weddings I've had a guest spill an entire year go bomb down the bride's dress oh I've had a baby be sick on a, dr- on a, yeah, on a bride yeah, yeah. You get like the. I've had a. Oh, I've had a bridesmaid having to be sewn into her dress. Oh, I've had that. I've, I had to sew it myself. Oh, we, we managed to get. <laughs> we managed to get one of the. The I think it was the bride's auntie, um, was a seamstress. Yeah. So she and, and because the dress split. Yeah. As they were just about to leave the bridal suite to go to the ceremony. Yeah, we had um, another one where we had to get a knife, like a kitchen knife, to make a hole in one of the. Um, oh, groomsmen's yeah, belts. Oh, in the belt. Yeah, in like a leather belt to for it to get go around his waist. Yeah, <laughs> that that's the thing. When when you shot weddings for like a certain period of time, you just you just learn to roll with it, don't you? Yeah, you have to, and you have to like be well equipped, like take like hair clips and yeah, safety and random pins. things like that. Yeah. I well I I've. Two, two complete extremes of doing the same thing. On wedding, midway through shooting weddings, I've run to Primark for wellies when it was hammering it down, and I've run for flip flops when all the, bride, uh, all the bridesmaids were complaining that they only had high heels, not flats, and they oh. wanted to dance in high heels. Oh, wow. So as we were going from the. Oh, no, so it wasn't as we were going. The wellies was as, as we were going from the. Uh, where the ceremony was to the to the venue, the flip flops was while they were having the wedding breakfast, while they were eating, I ran to yeah. Primark and bought 11 pairs of flip flops. What about you? Any any other stories that you can think I'm of? I'm trying to think. Like, typically on shoot, like other than like the getting equipment, things like run quite smoothly, yeah. I think. The, the thing with you that I've seen from knowing you for quite a while is you're always organized. Plan ahead. So. <laughs> you plan ahead, you know where you're going to be, you know what you're going to be shooting. Um, like whenever we do shoots, we always have like mood boards. Yeah, and stuff exactly. Like. If you plan for that, you always, 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 always think about what if the weather changes. Absolutely. As long as you do that, yeah. as long as you do that, everything's normal. Yeah. Like you say, apart from like equipment malfunctions or like tripping, falling, things like that. Yeah, exactly. Things that aren't really in your control. And I've had stuff where like people just haven't turned up, but that's like, that's not that funny either. <laughs> I had, <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I had that two hours ago. Yeah, I know. That's yeah. the reason why I got here early. Yeah, I can't think of anything else. If you've got any funny stories or bad stories um, from photo shoots, leave them down in the comments and we'll check those out as well. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, so a big thank you for watching and thank you for Andrew for joining me on this. Um, You're very welcome. We're also going to be filming something for his channel, so make sure you check that out. Um, I'll link it in the description below. Um, in the meantime, check us out over on Instagram. We're always yep. posting. We're always active. Always. Yeah. Thank you. Perfect. Cool. Got to do a little wave end.